Hi Jane. Hi Walter. Haven't we got a gorgeous morning this morning, Jane? Where are you, Walter? It's, this is winter, guys. It's just amazing. This is just a beautiful, beautiful morning. Look at it. It's stunning. All right. So for the first few minutes, before the actual start time, we're just going to um, walk to a spot where we can start from. We're walking along past a row of Norfolk Island pine trees at the moment. Let me just show you what they look like for anyone who's not from this part of the world. Sorry, Walter, let me just check. I've got something obscuring. Tucson, Arizona. Well, welcome. I neglected to check what the weather, what the temperature is going to be today. But I can tell you that I'm wearing not much more than a t-shirt and it's um, not quite 9am. So it's not bad for a winter's morning here in Sydney. Hi, Ella. 100 every day. Oh my goodness. What's that in Celsius? 37? 37 I think is 100. Hi Connie. Hi Barry. So we're at Long Reef Point Headland. Just here beside me we're walking alongside a, um, a dog off leash area. Looks like we might be having some puppy school happening over here. And at this point, we're also running alongside a, um, a main road, which we'll move away from very soon. Hello, I'm just checking. Good morning from Canada. Good evening from Canada. Welcome. Which part of Canada? Good morning, Lorraine. Another Aussie on board. It's a great time of day for Aussies to join Hago Tours. Nine o'clock on a Saturday morning. Let me just turn around and show you what we're looking at here. Ottawa. Ottawa Gatineau. I'm not sure what Gatineau is. So this is the Long Reef headland and basically the majority of it is taken up with uh, golf course. And then over to the left here, to the northeast, where the, uh, the sun is up in the sky over there. And we're looking out to sea over that side. So we're going to walk around this headland. Hi Peter. Peter's my brother. Peter's joining me with my dad. Hi Judith. Connie from Winnipeg. It's a stunning day. What's it like down in Canberra? Is it cold down there at the moment? And good morning, Marie. Welcome. I know I recall seeing you on past tours. Judith, we are in Long Reef. We're on Long Reef Headland, which is near the suburb of DY, between DY and Collaroy. Basically, at this point, we're about 15 kilometres as the crow flies from the city of Sydney, or around about 20 kilometres. Um, if you were to drive it. So at this point here, we're actually just going past a grove of banksia trees. And you can hear there's lots of rainbow lorikeets. Very noisy, very squawky. That's a banksia. We have lots of different kinds of banksias. We'll see more of them as we go along the trail. But that's what the flowers look like. And then as the flower ages, it turns into a seed pod. And those are the seed pods up there. Hi, Kate. Hi, Jane, Christine. Hi, Cheryl. So along this section of the path, we are in between the golf course and the main road. And they're doing a lot of the bush care. People are doing a lot of... Um, weed reduction around this area so occasionally we're going to come across little piles of um, 
detritus where they're ripping up lantana which is a real pest in our part of the world here's some that's been ripped up over here look someone's going to come by me on a bike well thank you Lorraine thank you so much I do appreciate it good morning Terence hi Mary hi Mari Lots of lorikeets around this part. I'm going to turn the camera around in a moment. I'm just kind of making my way over to um, a logical starting point. At this point, we're seeing a lot of she oaks, and I don't know if you can see, I'll try and find some. The cockatoos love them, they've got these seeds on them. And uh, let me just give this person some space. Good morning. Good morning. Right, so we're coming down towards DY Beach. Buggy, do you mean mosquitoes? Um, I haven't noticed any. It is winter, so we don't see so many mosquitoes around at this time of year. The bunkers and, and lakes on the golf course have frogs in them, so that would keep the numbers down. All right, let me just get down here. We're on a boardwalk now. Start here, I guess. It's a good spot. We're just kind of looking over towards DY Beach over there, but we'll be in a better position, just, position to see that in a moment. Alrighty. Um, hi, Laurie. Hi, Heather. And... Good morning everybody, my name's Lynn. Thanks all for joining this morning. We are in a place called Long Reef, which is near the suburb of DY in Sydney, Sydney, Australia. It's nine o'clock on a Saturday morning. Let's get that sun out of there. Good morning, Fiona. Good morning, Marion. And um, the sun's still right in my face. Move over here. It's a bit better. All right, so my name's Lynn, and uh, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we are meeting today on the lands of the Koringai and Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and pay respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. All right, so let's turn this camera around and we'll get started. So we're going to briefly head towards the sun, so I hope it doesn't obliterate the screen too much. And we're walking along this boardwalk here, just meeting a papa. Hello. Hello. So the boardwalk has been uh, constructed within the last few years just to help protect the landscape around here. It's a quite a vulnerable, vulnerable landscape and prone to erosion. So this boardwalk has uh, obviously made it easy for people to do the full walk as a circuit, which is lovely. Over to my right, we have the Long Reef Surf Club, which is currently undergoing uh, reconstruction. I'm not sure if they're doing a refurbishment or building an entirely new surf club building there. And then over behind that, we can see the sea. But as I said, we'll get into a better spot to see that in a little while. Let's continue on. This is a little bit of a curiosity. I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. It looks like a little bit of a, a cubby house or play grove for little girls. All sorts of little dolls and doll houses and what a, what a top spot for little girls to come and just play. That was an interesting bird call. Not sure what that was. If you open up the description for my tour, if you're able to, I did post a link to a bird site called eBird and the link is specific to this particular location. So you can actually see all the birds that have been sighted in this area. I think that it numbers around about 180 or so. 
but this is a bit of a bird sanctuary over to my right and if we get lucky we might see some um, pretty special birds today we're hoping so certainly hearing some So the first five or ten minutes we'll be walking along this path and then it'll open up to see the ocean and the sea and the cliffs. So we just need to get to that point. The first time I came along here a few days ago there was a brush turkey just in here sitting on a branch which was something I hadn't seen before. Let's see if we can spot that particular bird today. See if he's around. No, I can't see him. Oh, thanks, Terence. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I will show you again these banks here because it's quite a good example. This is uh, something uniquely Australian. That banksia flower, as they age, they tend to open up more and look more like this one here. And then they turn to seed and become a seed pod like where's a good seed pod here's one over here that's a good seed pod and they only germinate with the presence of fire so it actually needs to be i think it's the smoke that it requires that's a very young one hasn't even started to open yet whereabouts is it there it is right there so that that's a banksia and it's only one of a whole lot of uh, species of banksia Banksia was actually turned into a children's book character, the bad Banksia man. An Australian author by the name of May Gibbs wrote a book called Snuggle Pot and Cuddle Pie back in, I think it was the 1940s. And the Banksia man is based on that seed pod because it looks like it's got lots of eyes and mouths and if you use your imagination you can actually sort of visualise a a nasty character. Yes, Lorraine, big bad Banksia men. I highly recommend looking up Snuggle Pot and Cuddle Pie and the beautiful illustrations in the children's book by Mae Gibbs. Next time I do a tour with Banksias, I, I'll try and get hold of some images and put them into the chat. Sun's in my eyes. Hi, Carissa. Hi, EJ. <laughs> crunch, 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 crunch. Yes, I'm walking on gravel at the moment, as you can see. Some of these little birds are just too quick, but there's a little fairy wren just on the fence rail over there. Let me see if I can zoom in on it. It's brown, so it's difficult to see. But he's, she's just flicking her tail around, and the reason I know that she's she is because the male is a beautiful blue colour. Oh, she just went. I don't know if you caught a glimpse of it. Never mind, we may see another. But the superb fairy wren is a gorgeous little bird with a beautiful blue head, beautiful blue tail, and then the female is just a very very dull brown no doubt intended to be uh, difficult to spot in amongst the undergrowth now we he start to hear the sound of the sea good morning robert oh so you did get to see the little bird guys that's fabulous i'm glad you did Probably just a movement as it flew off. Let's have a look at this golf course. Any golfers here today? This is quite a lovely course. Um, my, my fellow guide Richard from Palm Beach was on my tour the other day and mentioned that he's actually played this course. And up on the hilltop over there is where all the wealthy people live. 
in their beautiful big houses. Look at that one right on the hilltop. I believe that's one house. Yes, Terence, that's the Pacific. Hi, Stacy. Let me just zoom out again. So, is that the remote control buggy? Look at that. <laughs> yes, it does, doesn't it? I think it's probably designed to look that way, to look like a ship. I imagine that was the brief given to the architect. Beautiful day to be out on the golf course. If you're a golfer, I'm not a golfer. And then over on our right again, we are walking alongside the sea. I'm going to try and walk on the grass a bit so you can hear the ocean instead of my foot feet crunching on gravel. I'm glad I didn't wear my jacket. I'm actually hot. Oof. So I've been staying down here. I don't normally do the Northern Beaches area. I normally do the Blue Mountains. But um, I have a family situation happening at the moment, which has meant I've had to stay down in the Northern Beaches for a couple of weeks. I can't complain though, look at this. It's not a bad place to be, uh, to have a force to stay. Hi Jenny. Lots of people taking advantage of the beautiful weather getting out on an early Saturday morning for a walk along here. I'll do a quick pan around from here and you'll see the difference as we move up the hill. So over in the distance there, I'm pretty sure that's North Head, which is uh, if you're at Manly Beach and looked up to your right, you'd, you'd get to North Head and beyond that is Sydney Harbour. The closest headland to us is DY Headland. There's a couple of hopeful surfers out there I can see if I zoom in on them. My brother was out taking surf photos this morning. He said it's pretty flat out there and I have to agree, it's not much of a surf. There's two or three hopefuls. Oh yeah, he got a little wave there. And then over here to the right is um, DY Beach itself. There we go. There's a few surfers out there this morning. All right, so let's, um, let's keep moving. I have a hill to climb and you're all gonna help me. You're all going to urge me on and lift me up this hill. See this hill up here? We're going up there. So we're coming off a high tide. Uh, I think low tide is um, forecast for around about 11 o'clock. We're, we're in between tides at the moment. The tide's on its way out. Oh, sorry. Yeah, on its way out. So at low tide, it is possible to walk out onto the rock platform, which we're just starting to see come into view up ahead. Good morning, Jan. Good morning, Kate. I'm going to try and muscle in 
beside these people so we can see the beach from here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With your help, Lorraine, I will definitely get up that hill. All right, so where are we? What have we got? There's the uh, rock platform over to the left. And the end of the headland. And then as we move around... There's actually a an egret on that little group of rocks. Let me see if I can zoom in on him. You tell me if you can see him. Let me get up a little bit. Here we go. I hope I'm holding the camera steady. It's difficult to see with the light on the screen. Oh, 10 times zoom. That's uh, that's quite close, isn't it? Good morning, TN. Good morning, Ava. We're just having a very close look, 10 times zoom at this egret. When I zoom out, you'll see exactly how far away he is from where I'm standing. There's a woman. She's actually got quite close to him. I don't know if you managed to get a successful shot of the egret. He's almost getting a shower over there. And now that I stand at this point here, I can actually see there's probably around about, or well, at least a dozen surfers out there. That's Long Reef Surf Club over there and then we can see that there's a few guys out there hoping that the swell's going to improve. Good morning Emma. All right let's move on we're going to get a different view of the beach as we get higher up this headland. Hi Darlene, hi Kimberly. Okay let's let's continue on. One last shot of the egret before I move on. Let's see. Because he's still there, still out there on that rock. There we go. Okay. So a nice little, nice little bridge and boardwalk at this point before we start climbing up the hill. And if I keep the keep the gimbal steady enough, even though I'm walking, you should be able to get some decent postcards as I walk. Just want to show you this cute little bridge shows over the stream in the golf course. That's rather cute. Looking into the sun, of course, but yeah. Here we can see the uh, impact of the heavy rains that we've had lately. It's gorged out all the sand, cut out the sand in this uh, water channel, little water course, and that feeds out to the ocean. I'm just going to let these people walk past me. Thank you for asking, Rhonda. Mum's on the mend and she looks like being discharged on Monday. I'll talk more about Mum and Dad as I walk along that, that part of the path further around where there's actually not a lot to see. And that's where the, uh, the stream flows out into the sea. Yeah, thank you for asking. 
it's been it's been challenging. There's more news. I'll get to it as uh, further around. Okay, I think I think I see with my poor eyesight a cormorant out on that rock out there drying his wings. Let me see if I can zoom in on it and we'll see if my eyes are deceiving me or if um, what I think I see is actually what it is. Let me see. We're going to zoom in over here. Tell me if that's what it is. It looks like on that rock, it looks like there's a cormorant drying its wings. Yeah, it's a little bit too far away to really get a good image, isn't it? I think we'll give that one a miss. But you get the idea. Right, let me just get down onto the beach again, just quickly at this point, and show you basically Long Reef Headland is an island connected to the mainland by a sand spit. Uh, which is the spit itself is known as an isthmus which is a word that I have trouble saying I want you all to try saying it tell me how you go isthmus or I understand it's also known as a trombolo so the rocks around here are very different to anything else around the area very dark red and orange whereas the rest of the area is actually sandstone this is uh, mainly ironstone with a bit of shale, but you can see how dark, how dark the rock is here. And then the headland itself has, um, might be difficult to see with the sun at this angle, but it's a mixture of red and orange. I'm going to get a bit closer to it to try and get the sun not affecting the colors try and get it out of view at the moment it just looks dark doesn't it but you can see that there's a definite red layer definite red stripe and then above it you've got this definite orange stripe get out of the way son so there we go. You can really see the difference in colour here. Thank you, Walter. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And hi, Lorraine, and hi, Lois. So I'm just made a deviation, a detour, so that we can see the colour of the rocks here because it's completely different to anything else around the local area. And try not to get my feet wet. Try not to walk into the ocean here. There we go. I just wanted to give you a glimpse around the corner before we head up that hill. Hi, Cheryl. Okay, let's back away from this water and start walking up the hill. Otherwise, we're going to not make it all the way around to the other end. Yeah, there's definite improvement all round and I'll give you more details as I get round to the other side of the track where there's an opportunity to actually tell you more. And thank you for asking, I do appreciate all your concern. It's an interesting, um, interesting view with just the the walkway, the path coming down to the beach and the water course in front. Thanks for an interesting shot. Okay, up this steep step again. 
So for anyone who wasn't on my tour two days ago, I did this exact same tour, but about an hour and a half later. So the light's a little different. The tide is different. And we'll always see different things. Whew. I definitely could have worn lighter pants rather than these heavy jeans. All right, everybody. This is where we get the heart rate up. I'll pause every now and again to read your comments because with the way the sun is at the moment, I just can't see them. Okay, this is the first point where we can stop and take a look out to sea. Then I'll pause and have a look at your comments. Excuse my puffing. Rhonda, what's the temperature today? Um, do you know, I forgot to check, but I think it's heading for around about 18, somewhere between 18 and 20, I think it was 20 the other day. Oh, Cheryl, that's terribly sad news. I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh, much love to you and your family. All right, I'm going to continue on and hopefully, hopefully this tour, we're all dealing with stuff, but hopefully this tour, tour for you can be a bit of a panacea. Let's go. I'm just letting a party of people walk past me. So here's another shot back towards Colorado Plateau. We'll zoom in and have another look at Colorado Plateau. Where all the rich people live. Colorado Plateau and Cromer. All these people, the golf course actually looks crowded to me. There's so many people out there at the moment. I'm getting a bit of a dip in signal as I walk up the hill. So um, it always comes back. If it does dip slightly, just rest assured it will come back. <clears throat> and let's, um, let's give you a view of the sea while I climb this hill. Was it cutie? Look at that. Isn't that cutie? Hi Angela. It's very pretty here, Cheryl. Hi Christine. Okay, so the wind has come up and I'm hoping that my MacGyver hack is working. You'll probably be able to hear the wind, but hopefully not the crackly, annoying. Um, vibrations against the mic um, hopefully that's all working fine it worked well the other day but the winds a bit stronger today excellent thanks Rhonda
All right, so from this point here, we're getting a view of the part of the rock platform. Now, this whole area is a marine national park, and it was uh, designated as such in 1980, the first marine national park in New South Wales. So it's actually a crime to take remove anything at all from the rock platform, even dead shells or dead seaweed, because it all is either habitat or food for other species. The coastal walk, the coastal walk goes for miles, Jane. Um, I think you can actually walk all the way from, I'm not sure if it's continuous all the way from Palm Beach, but you can go for a, a significant way. The part, little part that I'm doing is only three kilometers, but you can go all the way from, <laughs> Well, you, you can continue across the Harbour Bridge and go down to the southern suburbs. So the coastline itself is about 70 kilometres. And out of that, we have 70 beaches in Sydney, 70 surfing beaches. That doesn't include the beaches that are in harbours or inlets, like on the other side of Pitwater, for example. There's a couple of guys out there on stand-up paddle boards. I'm going to zoom in and see if you can see them. Uh, where are we? Sometimes it's tricky to line up. He's just above that point there, one of them. There we go, there's a stand-up paddle board. And the other day when we were here, we saw a couple of foil surfers. So from this point here, we're starting to see the other side of the headland, which is where Collaroy Beach is. That's over there. Hi Tiffany, hi Genya. So I'll just zoom in and show you, that's where Collaroy Beach is. And that was named after a shipwreck, uh, the SS Collaroy. As you can imagine, there were quite a few shipwrecks back in the day around this area. Many lighthouses. Um, there's a lighthouse at Palm Beach, which is right up to about, oh, how far is it? We won't see it today. We'll see the headland near where it's located, um, but we won't actually see the lighthouse itself. I'm not aware of any lighthouses between Palm Beach and North Head, to be honest. Can't think of any. So there's the rock shelf there. And you can actually see, if I look down here, you can start to see just what the, the bottom of the sea looks like. There's lots of living organisms down there in amongst the rocks. And again, the view out to, that's North Head over there. I don't see anything splashing about out there. So no indication that there's any whale activity. So around about this point, uh, a couple of days ago, we saw lots of uh, noisy minor birds um, having a go at a red wattle bird. Noisy miners are quite small birds, but they 
in numbers and very loud, they uh, can be quite uh, imposing on any other birds in the area. And we're almost at the top. We've done well, guys. Your encouragement has got me here without too much huffing and puffing. pause here for a moment as you can see we're actually quite a bit higher now than we were before Whew. I'll take a breath <laughs> hi Francis so here we are looking down the coast back towards DY Beach you can actually see from this point now there's a lagoon so let's zoom in that's the surf club down there that I pointed out to you before. And then in just behind that, that's DY Lagoon. And I don't think there's any public access to it. I've looked for paths to get in there. It's basically a wildlife sanctuary. <laughs> oh, you needed the rest as well, Laurie. Well, there you are. We needed to uh, stop and take a photo. Always good to stop and take a photo and pause and take in the view, not just keep walking all the time. Let's zoom out and listen to the sea. There we go. All right, let's keep going. Oh, geez, nearly fell over. Went over on my ankle. <laughs> you almost saw a spectacular 360. Don't know if it would have made a very good postcard. It's an interesting silhouette just here with the bike and the people. I don't know, is this, is this too voyeuristic? I just like the silhouette. There we go. How's that? Yeah, I'm fine, Cheryl. <laughs> Silly me, I tend to go over on my ankle a lot and I have learned to become very, very deliberate in how I place my feet and conscious of how I do so because I'm renowned for falling over. All right, this is the, uh, this is where we're headed. This spectacular lookout. And we have an almost 360 degree view. In fact, I'll give you a 360 degree from here and then I'll give you another one from a little bit further. There's a ton of little small fishing boats or something over there. We'll have a look at those in a minute too. All right, before I do the 360 degree, I'll just show you the coastline from here. You can literally see one headland all after another, all the way up the coast. There we go. Okay, so let's zoom out and do that 360. Starting from the golf course. Okay, we're going to head right. Hi Katie, hi Jeannie. Let's go.
There we go. That was the full 360 degrees. Isn't that, isn't that hilarious? The mum doing the count. How many of us have done that in the past? All right, let me just show you this. This is the, um, this is an outline of the coast. All right, now let's see if I can get down and actually see it. All right, so this is Long Reef. Mm. Long Reef Point here, we're standing on that point there. And what we would have been looking at, yeah, North Head, that's the furthest point, and then this is DY Headland. So these are the two headlands looking south. And then up to the north, you can see all these headlands all the way along, heading up the coast to Baranjoa Headland, which I think is out of view. If you have a look along, it's round to the left. So where Richard does his lighthouse tours is at Baranjoa Headland, that's up there, where Home and Away and filmed, Home and Away is filmed, is along that stretch of beach there. And um, and that's the coastline from Baranjoa to North Head. And they've got all these lovely tiles around this plinth. Okay, I am going to now go down to another point just here. Let's have one last shot of this guy. I recommend coming up here, Lorraine. Absolutely recommend coming up here. Spend a day. You're only a few hours away. Escape the cold. <laughs> this little girl's lost her ball. I was going to kick it to her, but it probably would have ended down the hill. So there's a whole bunch of boats out there. I don't know if they're expecting to see whales, but let's have a look. I'll just show you just how many boats are out there. I've never seen that many out there before. So we've got, there's a, there's a group of about six over here. My hair's getting in my face. And then if I turn around here, we've got just beyond the rock shelf, there must be about a dozen boats out there, all in a line. And I reckon they're expecting to see something for them to all be situated there like that. You wouldn't recognise Marylands now, Lorraine, I don't think. It's very different. I'm going to walk down to where that rail is there and get a better look at the rock platform but we're not actually going to go down to the rock platform so give me a few minutes and um, and we'll get down to there there are steps involved so you'll have to encourage me not to fall based on that past experience okay everybody will me upright Hold my hand. So I don't see any foil surfers out there today. Basically, it's the um, it's the surfboard that sits above the water. They're, you might have seen YouTube videos. I think there's um. I think there's some Red Bull videos with foil surfers. And then the foil itself sits below the water, much like the um, the ocean racing yachts. And they get towed out there. That's a huge camera this guy's got. They get towed out there by jet ski. So they take them a fair way out and then they uh, they don't need the big breaking wave to come back in. They just use the swell, ride the swell. So they can get quite a long ride.
Oh, I took it slow, Cheryl. I'm here. I made it with fins. Yeah, it's, it's got that um, sort of fin underneath the water, like the, um, do you remember the yacht that they used at the America's Cup? A bit like that, I suppose. <clears throat> and then they've got this board that sort of sits above the water. It's really, defies you, your logic. You think, how on earth does that thing float? <laughs> but somehow it does. So I was here the other day and there were a couple of photographers sitting on um, sitting on the rock just over here, excitedly telling me that they'd just seen an osprey. I haven't seen one today. Wouldn't that be an awesome sight? But what I do have for you is a photo that my brother took of an osprey. So let me just show you that because it's something else. So there's an osprey with a fish, with a magpie chasing it. And there was one of those spotted right here just a couple of days ago. It's a, it is, it's a stunning photo, isn't it? All right, we're just gonna go through the gate here. No dogs allowed. Here we go. Message for all you dogs sitting at home. Sorry guys, you're not allowed in here. You'll have to stay back here. All right, if you spot a whale, tell me. They're currently on their northern migration be heading up to Fraser Island and Harvey Bay and places like that and whaling, uh, whaling, whale spotting tours are actively going out to sea from Sydney Harbour at this time of year. I saw some great photos the other day. Someone had seen some quite close to their boat and I'd say that's what all these guys are doing. I reckon they are uh, out there hoping to see some activity. Oh, that's true, Peter, yeah. Fishing competition is what Peter's suggesting. That's possible. I don't know how fishing competitions work. All right, so that's Long Reef Point. We're not going to go down to the rock platform um, because every time you go down, you have to come back up again. And that would take me forever. I would have to cut the tour and then crawl back up, I think. <laughs> so we're not going to do that. Uh, and the water, there's a little bit too much water over the platform. <laughs> so we'll head back up and then we'll walk around to Fisherman's Beach. I can actually show you the placard here that describes a little bit more about the area. So this is Long Reef Aquatic Reserve. It tells you that Long Reef Beach is one kilometre to the left of us, 770 metres to Fisherman's Beach. That's what we're going to try and knock off in the next nine minutes. How do you reckon we'll go? And we are currently here and we are headed for here. So we're just going to walk around to there. First, we have to get back up these steps. And when we get to the top, we'll have one last look around the point before we head back down the hill. We're in Australia. We're about 20 kilometres north of Sydney. We're in a Sydney suburb between D.Y. and Collaroy. We're actually standing on Long Reef Headland. <laughs> Thank you, Laurie. Thank you for not making me go down all the way to the bottom. The view's always better from the top, isn't it? You can hear me stomping on the steps. 
what you may not know, you probably know this plant. It's a, it features in a lot of rock gardens. We call it pig face. Um, it's endemic to Australia. Not, it's not unique to Australia, it's other countries as well. But it's also a well-known bush food. Oh, thank you, Marion. I do appreciate that. Okay. Let's do one last quick 360 before we head back down the hill. And I'll do it from up here so we can see the golf course again. Okay, we're ready. 360 coming up. First of all, to the north, where we can see Colorado Beach and all the headlands heading up the coast. The whale sculpture. Out to the rock platform. Then down to the south, where we see North Head and DY Headland. DY Beach, DY Lagoon. And back to the golf course with um, Colorado Plateau and Chroma in the background. Okay. Let's um let's head back down the hill. Gee, there's a lot of people out today. Don't blame them, it's such a gorgeous morning. It's such a beautiful location. <clears throat> I am getting really, really close. Let me see if I can show you. This guy here on the lawn right next to me is a willy wagtail. There he is. I didn't even need to zoom in. Okay, that's Willy Wagtail. They have a beautiful song and he's being very quiet at the moment. So over here the other day I saw two foil surfers with jet skis tying them out. There's some really nice sculptures up ahead and uh, they mark, kind of mark the entrance to the, Len, the, the Long Reef um, Marine Park, I guess. There's three sculptures of seashells and starfish. Don't want to get don't want to get children in shot necessarily. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I'll try and get a shot with all three of them in. So there's a few sculptures and artworks around here. Including this. Dance of the Tides, a little crab on a rock. It's quite cute. <laughs> Hi, Carla. Oh, there's one more sculpture just up ahead. So since since we met a couple of days ago, and for those who aren't familiar with um, what I was, people have been asking me. Um, my parents, my parents are in their eighties. They uh, travelled to Western Australia. We're on a um, uh, an organised tour a few weeks ago, and they returned. A few days after they returned, they got they were diagnosed positive with COVID. And that laid them out, hit them pretty hard, hit them both pretty hard. My father's recovered, but my mother has now the symptoms of long COVID. She, she ended up in hospital with severe breathing difficulties. And uh, she went into hospital about, 
oh, about 10 days ago. So my father has dementia and my mother is his full-time carer. So obviously that means that he needed someone to fill those shoes. And my brother and I have been sharing in taking over what my mother does. So uh, I've been staying at night and my brother's been coming in and helping out during the day. We take dad out, we take him to visit my mum. She's on the mend. She's been moved into a rehabilitation hospital. So that's really good. Um, but the COVID symptoms are just, they're horrendous. They tell her that she's going to have this for eight to 10 weeks, this breathing difficulty. Um, she's just breathless. She just can't get enough air. And, um, and it's really frustrating for her because she's a, a healthy, active woman who finds being confined to a hospital the ultimate frustration. <laughs> and for Dad, it's confusing because he doesn't understand why, why she's not home. So it's been, been pretty tricky, been hard to, um, been hard to deal with and, and brings it home to you what, what my mother has on her plate perpetually and uh, so yeah so that's that's what we're that's what we're um doing at the moment and this is just me time so me coming down here and doing this little tour for you is part of my me time and and thank you you guys because you're helping me um i'm pausing here to look at this because this is a memorial to someone who obviously loved this place and it's dedicated to let me see. I'll read the comments in a moment. It's Derek says it's Sheila's Rest, a gift to the people of Warringah for their tranquility and pleasure. Sheila Ellen Mary Wells, 1925 to 2000. She who so loved nature's beauty. And I'll show you the inscription on the shell itself. Sorry, I'll just get this background here. So we've got this beautiful carved seashell and the inscription says for she for she who so loved I don't know if you can see it through the lens for she who so loved nature's beauty there we are that's a lovely memorial isn't it And let me just pause and read your comments before we move on because I've gone over the hour now and now I'm sort of um, imposing on your time. Thanks, Carla. Um, yeah, there was a lot of interest when I did this tour two days ago and based on feedback is why I decided to do it again. Thanks, Cheryl. Thanks, Marion. Thanks, Jane. You know, my story is not unique. It's just my story. So, yes, they, they received their first booster and they were just about waiting to get their second booster. Um, so they're due to get it. But while, um, <laughs> while all this was happening, my dad, who um, takes blood thinners, has very thin skin and is constantly causing injuries to himself. And he needs to go to the medical center and let me just sort out this image while I'm talking it's not a very good view is it needs to go and get his uh, dressings attended to every few days and the last time he went to get his dressing changed he suffered a low blood pressure episode and they carted him off to hospital so uh, so it's all happening it's all happening at the moment and uh, <laughs> Anyway, this is just this is just what we all deal with, isn't it? Let me show you this. This is really interesting. This is um, native spinach. I don't know if it's been deliberately planted or if uh, it's just growing wild, but it does grow wild all over the place. We call it warrigal greens, and you can forage that and make a spanakopita. Spanakopita. Is that how you say it? My gimbal seems slow to respond. That's why I'm fumbling a bit with it. 
Well, they've told her she's coming home now on Monday or Tuesday, so she's ecstatic about that. She was very determined to come home yesterday. Um, but that was her idea. That wasn't the hospital's idea. So we now have agreement that she's coming home Monday or Tuesday, which is excellent. And my dad will be very happy to see her at home. Your, your experience, Cheryl, is far more far more serious than mine uh, on, on a completely different level. And I, I can't imagine what your family is dealing with, has dealt with. Thanks, Jan. Hi, Leonard. Thanks for following, Laurie. As I said, I don't normally do tours down here. Um, this is just a opportunistic tour, if, if you like and a way of allowing me to get some exercise and some fresh air and share it with you. When I get home, I'll be back in the Blue Mountains and I'll resume doing tours there. So, as I said, typically, I've gone over time. Was I too slow climbing up those stairs? Maybe. <laughs> but we're not far away from Fisherman's Beach, which is where I want, where I want to say goodbye. So if you'll just indulge me for a few more minutes, we'll get back down to the beach and then I'll sign off. We've got one last little viewpoint to look up the coast before we get down to the beach. And I'll try not to trip over all these tree roots on the path. Oh, they're in my spot. Is there enough room for me to muscle in next to them? Here we go, so there's Colorado Beach. All right, let's continue on to the beach. That fellow made a waving away gesture when I came towards him and started talking. He was on a, um, he was on a phone call, I think. Had it on loudspeaker. I wasn't to know. <laughs> anyway, it's a public space. All right, I've, I'm missing comments from you and I will catch up with them in a moment. Just show you this sign if anyone wants the sign. Long Reef Point. I know sometimes people like to take postcards of the, uh, the signs. There we go. And that's the logo for Warringah Council, which is no longer the council for this area. Now that's Northern Beaches Council. We had a big, big controversy when our state government forced a whole lot of councils to merge. So we don't have a Warringah Council any longer. You're welcome, Connie. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> Salad. <laughs> yeah, kind of. I prefer to cook it, though. Thanks, Mark. And it's actually very good in a spanakopita. Hi, Jean. Hi, Martha. Sorry, Carla, I missed what that comment's in relation to. Hi, MK. I'm glad you enjoyed the walk. I definitely enjoyed it. And um, it's a tonic. And the air this morning, that, that slight breeze, is just cool enough to take the, the heat out of the walk as well. Hi, Rob and Anne. I'm sorry, we're almost at the end of the tour, but I'm just going to finish up down at uh, one last beach before I close off. Not done yet, Jane. I highly recommend coming up this way. In fact, it's on the bus route. If you can get yourself to Sydney, if you can get yourself to Sydney and get on a um, 
uh, what's the route number? There's a big, big uh, double-decker yellow bus that comes along this way. It goes along Pittwater Road, and there's a bus stop right across the road from uh, Long Reef Golf Club. And then you can do the walk. It's actually really easy to get to. So I highly recommend it. Oh, thanks for following, Carol. Oh, that was, no, not Curtis Stone. No, it was Hayden Quinn. And the, the, um, the surf shoot didn't happen because the, the surf, there was no surf yesterday. So they're rescheduling. Um, so Hayden Quinn le lives around here, lives in DY. And it was a friend of his that organised the photo shoot. So the two of them, the pair of them, were going to go out surfing at either Narrabeen or uh, Manly. They were going to choose between one of those two breaks. Uh, but it turns out that this, there was just no surf, nothing worth surfing yesterday. So they've, uh, they've postponed, they've rescheduled. Easy to assume that it was Curtis Stone though. Yes, I know key of surfing the menu and all of that. Hayden Quinn was a um, contestant on MasterChef and actually has, he pops up on shows from time to time on SBS Food, still on TV now. There's a, an Australian flag out in the water there, which I'm trying to get to because it's a bit of a curiosity. I've really gone over time now, haven't I? Right. So here you can actually see the striations, the colours on the headland as well. Okay, can you see the Australian flag? The real oddity. And this is called Fisherman's Beach. There's all the dinghies stacked up against the, the embankment over there. I don't know why there's an Australian flag out in the water, but someone's anchored it pretty securely and it's a permanent fixture. Here we go. All right, so I'm gonna finish the tour here. Let me just turn the camera around. Thank you again so much, everybody, for joining me this morning. And I'm sorry I've taken 15 minutes more of your time than I should have. I can see that I'm red in the face again. I should have bought a hat. Never mind. Vitamin D and all that. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed the tour. I've I have, and I've enjoyed having your company. So if you've if enjoyed if you've enjoyed it and. Um, uh, you know, please follow my channel, share some postcards on um, Facebook, write a review, and if you think I was worth it, I'm always grateful for any tips you can spare. Thank you again, and please enjoy the rest of your day or evening, wherever you happen to be. Bye for now.